So we're going to go backwards a little bit from uh, what we've done in other Fusion 360 videos. We're going to go to the very beginning of the manufacturing process. And we're going to look at some of the just the most basic uh, setup of a part. We're going to try to keep these in some short, uh, probably under 10 minute videos. Okay, so to get started, here is a, a block with a small hole in it. This is going to be our starter part, and then in later uh, videos, we'll, we'll, we'll make it a little bit more complicated. So you really kind of can't get terribly too much more, you know, simple than this. You know, we've got a cube. The cube is 60 millimeters by 60 millimeters and a 40 millimeter diameter hole that is um, six millimeters deep, I believe. And if you want, you can come up here. You can check from here to here. And yeah, it's six millimeters. So. We're still in our design workbench. So this is where you make the thing. And then we want to go down here to go to manufacture. So we'll click that and our tools change up at the top. At this point in time, we are about to decide what type of machining operation you might like to do on this. But the thing you don't want to forget is that really the first thing you should do is create a new setup here. So here is where you go to create a new setup. So I say that you should as opposed to you have to because you can come up here and you can just go straight to an operation, but it'll add in a default stock or setup. We're going to mostly refer to it as a stock here in a second. Uh, and it won't be set up the way you want it. And then later you might have some issues because you forgot, right? So you go here to new setup, you pick this, and here's how it starts. The, the kind of tan-ish, whatever that color that is, is the stock we're going to cut this out of. Now, in our particular case, in this test product, what we want is a hole in a thing. I do not actually want a block with a hole in it. So that changes things a little bit. So for example, right now with this extra stock, well, you don't even have to have it here wrapped around like this, but the idea would be um, maybe you want to remove this excess material so you get exactly this sized square out of the, the part that you're, you're the, this material that you're trying to cut it out of. You'll notice that here from the side view, it's down on the bottom. Your part is down at the bottom of your stock, but there is a little bit uh, excess at the top. So again, you lay this flat down on the table, it's going to go around and the idea being you would remove this stock, you'd remove this ma stock material off the top here, and you would end up with just the right size cube. I don't want the cube, so I will go here to stock. Now let me tell you this, I'm not going to take time to look through every single tab. I want to give you enough to just get started and we'll try to hit some of these later down the road, okay? so. I go here, um, I've got mode relative size, and I say stock offset mode. I pick this and I say no additional stock, and when I click this, the stock is still here. It's hard to tell uh, because the part is basically flat. If we had something lumpy, you'd see that what you're getting right now is a uh, cube rectangle that, that is enveloping the entire part. It is not going down into the hole. So the idea being, the operations that we create in the future will say, I need to remove the um, material away, the stock away to get this part that I'm after. So I'm going to hit OK and call that good. So that is just what we need for right now. There's so much more to talk about, but like I said, I just kind of want to go down the path as straight as I possibly can uh, and not get too, uh, you know, deviate too much. So the stock has been created. Now I want to go create an operation. So for this type, I probably would go with adaptive clearing. So I'm going to hit this. And then what I want to do is, well, I want to hit the OK button. So here's the thing that I talk about a lot. What is the most minimal amount that I could do to get this to work and not give me an error? So for example, if I go, well, let's just hit OK and see what happens. So I hit OK and it's going to tell me it doesn't even really give you an error. It just pops up and says, select a tool. I'm going to close this for a second. I want you to see, okay, go away. I want you to see right here, tool, select. There's no tool here. So when I hit OK, it says, whoa, you, you didn't pick a tool. You got to pick a tool. Okay, so I'll do that. So I'll pick a tool here, and I want to go to my local library. This place right here is where you're going to store all of your tools. 
These other ones would go along with the document, and these down here are some Fusion 360 library uh, sample tools that are already there. So the idea would be, in your local library, is a set of tools that you actually have in your shop, not just ones that are laying around or dream ones that you think that you're gonna get one day, you know, just the stuff that you have. So pretty quickly, in this case, I want to have a flat end mill. I hit the plus sign you see up there, and now I'm faced with a whole lot of parts. Well, I'm gonna pick one of these, sorry, I'm faced with a whole lot of mills here and different types of uh, cutting tools, if you will, water jet, laser, plasma, etc. Okay, so I look through here and I see uh, there's a ball mill, bull nose ball. What, what are all these? Well, you could surely go ahead and look these all up. I'm going to say right now, um, I want a flat end mill. It is a cylinder. It has the flutes on it to do the cutting, and it's completely flat on the bottom. So if I hit that, what I want to do here is give it the properties of the end mill that I have. So you can get it out and measure it. Maybe you could look at um, the website where you bought it from and maybe it'll tell you. Uh, I'll just tell you for right now, I'm gonna say that this is going to be a 0.25 IN, so 0.25 inches F, you can write it out. We can just say flat end mill, right? And and maybe, maybe that's what you want. I usually come up with little codes like 0.25 F, something like that. So that's just in my description. Then I can go to the cutter here, and, and it's a flat end mill because that's the one we picked. Now the unit is in millimeters. I want to change it to inches. Now this is this is just kind of you know the way I usually do things. If you live in the United States, it's going to be probably a bit easier for you to find uh, you know imperial type uh, units, right? The um, end mills. But anywhere else in the world, you're going to be dealing with metric. So you'll probably notice that I make parts in metric and then I end up cutting them in, um, in imperial. And it doesn't really matter. You know, I mean, you could get it doesn't matter that you made the part in metric and you're cutting it in inches. The the program can do the math to make sure that it doesn't actually, um, you know, leave a little behind or cut too much. It's not going to do that. So I change it over to inches. And then now I can come down here and fill this out. Well, what do you need to do? It says number of flutes. For what we're doing, it doesn't really matter, but I can tell you it's probably, it might be a two, it might be a, a four flute, but whatever. It doesn't matter for the operation that we need right now at the moment. What I have to give it here is, uh, you notice it just went to 10, mil, 10 millimeters. That's kind of strange. Um, I want to type in 0.25, so that's the diameter. The shaft diameter is going to be the, the, well, you can leave it at the tool diameter if you want, or you could type in 0.25. Uh, and now the overall length, I don't know, it's a made up one. Most of them are probably about two inches. You're not going to find really long end mills, as in like six, eight, 10 inches, right? They wiggle too much. Length below the holder. So if the, the holder in the picture here, how much is sticking down below this? We don't care about this right now, okay? Uh, these things and some of these other tabs, like the holder you're using, can be used later to calculate. Uh, the software can tell you if your holder is going to end up hitting the part. Don't care right now. So if it's a two inch long part, I'm going to say that it's maybe 1.5 inches. Uh, that's not very much, but whatever. Uh, I would just go with one. So it's sticking one inch below the holder. And if you do this, now it's telling you that this cannot be shorter than the shoulder length, okay? And so now the shoulder down here is going to be, let's say, 0.75. And then if I click down here, the flute length is going to be 0.5 inches. And now the errors go away, okay? Now, this is, this is just based upon stuff that I've seen through some of the end mills that I have. And again, I'm, I'm going for things that don't, you know, I don't really care about some of these, but you might if you're doing things more advanced. Now up here, we've got shaft, holder, cutting data, post-processor. Don't need to do anything here, just hit accept. And now we have a tool in our library. So I don't, I don't want to spend too much time here right now because I want to just get to cutting the part. We'll come back here at some other time to talk about all the different types of things that you might want to do as you're developing, creating a tool. So here's my tool right here and I hit select. Now I have this, this quarter inch uh, end mill and you can see you know it looks about right for scale if for some reason it looks like it's really really far off go check your numbers and then well I got a whole lot of stuff and I've got a lot of different tabs right here 
Let's just hit OK and see what happens. So I hit OK, and I'm not getting an error. And if you look right here where it says T2 Adaptive 2, if it had a lot of work to do, you'll see it start counting up a percentage right there, 10%, 20%, how long it's taking to calculate it, you see, or how long until it's done. So this happened pretty quick. Now, it's done, it worked, it didn't give me an error, but that doesn't mean it's good, okay? So what you're looking at, now, now that we've got something here, we can kind of slow down and, and, and uh, kind of examine what's going on. I have my block, I have the hole in it. It recognizes that it needs to remove the hole in that area, so it's going to do some things. The thing it's doing right here, red arrow, yellow line, it's saying I'm gonna start from right here, I'm gonna go down, and the red is a ramp, and so it's going to, going to spiral around until it gets down to the bottom of the part, and then it's gonna start spiraling out. You see, so all these blue lines are on flat plane. The red lines are slowly rotating down into it. And the reason behind this is that if there's a lot of material here, you don't wanna just plunge into it. These aren't drills. They don't have sharp pointy tips to them. They're not really good for just jabbing into the material. So it slowly goes down to it, uh, like I said, until it gets down to the bottom, and then it starts to flare out. So if we look at this from the, the top view, this is the step over right here. Now it's got a different name, but this is gonna be a little bit easier to understand. This first thing we did is stepping down. How far is it going down into the material? And this right here is the step over. The problem with this is that when this spirals down in, that could damage things if you didn't manage this, because we didn't, right? We just hit the OK button. And then the step over could very likely break your end mill if it's stepping over too much. If the end mill won't break, well, then you might damage the part to some degree. You could even push it right out of the clamps, potentially. So let's, let's go ahead and simulate this. Oh, and I wanna show you something else here. Look right here, you see this ring? That ring, this is not a video glitch. This is the thing we wanted to cut, and this is showing what it is cutting. There's another piece of this that it automatically, by its defaults, unless you tell it not to, leaves a little bit of material behind. And there's some good reasons for that, okay? But we'll look at that later. I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna right click on this, and I'm gonna say um, simulate. So I go to simulate, and it opens up this window. Now, this is kind of hard to, there's gonna be a handful of things in here that I am, it's gonna look a certain way on my screen and not yours because it remembers what I did last time. It's really kind of difficult to, to, to try to avoid that. So I'll try to put it back to probably what you'll see. You might see something like this. I think tool paths, they're usually checked, but this thing here with all the little black dots, they're not usually there. So you look maybe something like this. Also, the stock here, um, I'm not seeing it, so I'll put this on. And then what I can do, uh, I can also uncheck transparent, you see, or check it again. And now your play button is down here at the bottom. So I hit the play button and it just went really fast. So let's do that again. So here's, here's the speed button. And down here at the very bottom, this gray, now it's green bar here, that's actually a thing. And this is, this is uh, well, let me hit play and then I'll show you what that does. So this comes down here and it starts to remove material. Now we don't simulate just for the fun of it. We simulate to see what gets left behind and I can study it, like look at that. That's cutting almost half the um, end mill thickness, diameter worth of material there. And if this is a very hard material, that could be bad for it. But down here, I don't know if you could see that little little black mark. So I can grab this down here. I'm grabbing it with my mouse and just moving along, scrubbing, if you will. So I'm moving it back and forth here. And then I could get to right about there and go, yeah, what's that? What's, let, me, let me take a look at that. Oh yeah, that's, that's just what I wanted or that's not what I wanted. But you see how you could use that, right? So that's, that is making your stock and making a tool very quickly, rudimentary and then creating a toolpath and simulating it, okay? So I'm gonna leave this for right now. That's just the basis getting into it. I'm gonna make another one right after this that is talking about some of the, the, the issues that we're seeing right now, things that we wanna clean up, like this step over right here, and maybe I don't want it to go all the way down to the bottom all in one shot.